create a new scene. I've created one and I've called it Platforms. It's currently got nothing in it. It's just empty with a main camera and a directional light. So what we're going to do in here is play around with these tiles uh, that I've got. If you get the resource attached to this lecture, it's just called platforms.unitypackage and bring that in to your assets, you'll get a folder called platforms. If you open it up, you're going to see a whole bunch of different shaped platforms. Grab this platform Z and drag that into the scene so that you can just have a bit of a look at it. Now what I'm going to do here is with it selected over in the inspector, we're going to set its X, Y and Z values all to zero. So it's zeroed in and then I'll just double click so we're looking at it like that. Now what is the size of this? Well, just zoom out a little bit. Let's just control D on it and make a second one. And if this was like a path that you're running along, the next one you'd actually want to appear would be here or at the other end. So let's just put it here and have a look at the coordinates for the new position. So if we go over and have a look in the inspector for this other one, have a look at its position. I've put it at minus 9.98. Now that's pretty close to 10 and I've actually designed these platforms so that they will go 10 apart. So if we put minus 10 there, you'll see that it's nicely aligned with this one. Okay, if we grab that first platform again, control D and this time instead of moving it, I'm just going to position it here. So what Z value would you use to have it on this end, do you think? Well, this one was minus 10. So the second one, the second copy here, if I put that at a Z for 10, it's going to align here. So we know that we can create a whole bunch of these in a line and each one will actually be 10 units apart on the Z axis. Now, just using this platform itself, we could create a really simple generation uh, of a simple world. Go into the hierarchy and just delete all of those platforms that you added and we'll go back. Actually, we'll just do it in this folder in the platforms. I'm going to create a C-sharp script and we will call it generate world. Okay, so open that up in your editor. Then what we're going to do in here in the start is to simply loop around and build up a really quick world just using that platform so we don't need an update let's pass in the platform so public game object platform and then in the start we'll put four int i equals zero i is less than how many do you want let's say 20 20 of them and then i plus plus and then inside the for loop, we're just going to instantiate a whole bunch of uh, these platforms. So instantiate platform. So where are we going to put these platforms? Well, the first one is going to go at 0, 0, 0. The next one's going to go at 0, 0, 10. And the next one's going to go at 0, 0, 20, etc etc. Okay, so we need to possibly store a position vector here. So vector three pos equals new vector three zero zero zero. Or of course you could just set that to vector three dot zero. Then let's put pos in here and then we will use a quaternion dot identity. We don't want to rotate the platform at all otherwise they're not going to line up perfectly then after we've placed the first platform let's just update the position dot z value plus equals 10 or minus 10 if you wanted to go in that direction okay so save that now let's just go quickly back into unity in the hierarchy add an empty game object so right click create empty and just call that world Drag and drop your generate world script onto there. And then where it's got room for the platform, give it your platform Z. 
Okay, it's called Platform Z because it's longer in the Z direction. All right, so press play. And there we have, go back to the scene so I can see this a bit better. Move around 20 straight platforms. And there they are. Okay, so that's the first part of generating a procedural world. Let's go and add a few other platforms. So let's turn our platform up here into an array and we'll call it platforms. And then in the instantiate, we're going to instantiate platforms at position platform number. Now platform number, we can make that an int with anything inside it. So let's just go above here and put int platform number equals random dot range. It has to be an index into that platforms array. So we're going to have it between zero and platforms dot length. Okay, so this will now work with one or a hundred different platforms put into the game object. So save that, switch back into Unity. Now click on your world. This time we're going to set the platforms to a size of, let's say, three. And we're going to use the platform Z. We're going to use the platform Z split. And we will use the thin platform Z. All right, so now we should get a random mix up when we press play. So we'll go to play, have a look in our scene, and there you can see a nice random path of all of those different path tiles. Notice they're all the same length as the platform Z. Now, if you want to create your own models, your own platforms here, then what you need to do is to use this platform as a template. You can grab it out of Unity and drag and drop it onto your desktop. And what that will do is give you the FBX file for it that you can open up in Maya or in Blender, whichever modeling package you're using, and model your own platform using the size of this space, that volume there. And then you know whatever you create, as long as they meet end to end, that you can put your models into this code and create uh, your own custom procedural world. Now, before we go any further with this, we really need to create prefabs out of all of these platforms, and you might also want to put some texture on them. So stop playing whatever you were doing before and just drag these objects into the world. Just put them all in there somewhere. Or you could do them one by one, which might be a bit easier. I'll come over to the stairs in a moment and show you what's going on with those. But for these ones here, if you want to go into your materials and say, grab hold of, I've got craters, if you want it to look sort of moon-like, and drag those onto these objects. And then the stairs are a sort of special object I've got. Um, you don't have to put the railings on the side, but I have given you the railings for it. Let's just focus on those. Okay, so now the railings are just here. And if you grab those and bring them out, it's just a matter of getting your railing and making it a child of the stairs up and then duplicating it because you actually want one on each side. Select the railing and position it at zero, zero, zero. And that will be zero, zero, zero with respect to the stairs. Do that with both of your railings. And then you want to grab those railings and align them with the stairs once they're already a child. There's not too much changing that you have to do with those. And then if you want to color those railings, there's also a black shiny rails color that you can just drag and drop onto those and that will give you 
your stairs. I don't think I've got that quite positioned well enough. Bring that down just a little bit. Bring that down like that. Okay, so there's our stairs. Right, so at this point over in the hierarchy, we've now got one, two, three, four, five different platforms that we can make into prefabs. Right, so um, along with that, we're going to create tags. So select the stairs up or one of them, doesn't matter. Go over into the inspector and go to tags and go add tag. Then in this list, you want to add a tag for each one. So stairs up and then we want platform Z thin and platform Z split and platform T section and then platform Z. Right now once you've added all of those, oh and one more, we need a stairs down. Okay so uh, first of all grab the stairs up and over in the tags set it to stairs up. Okay, then while you've got it, just duplicate it as well and rename it to stairs down and change its tag to stairs down. Okay, so you'll have stairs up and stairs down. Now, don't worry that they're both facing in the same direction. We'll manipulate them with code and then go through all of your others and set them to the appropriate tag. And make sure you do get the correct tag. It's very important when we come to positioning these that we know which object we've got a hold of. So we now can go back into assets and create prefabs out of all of those. So just drag and drop them and create original prefabs out of all of those items. Once you've done that, you can delete them all out of the hierarchy. And then if you select your world, you can actually add the platforms back into um, Generate World. So I'm going to set size to, let's say, five. Actually, no, let's do four. Let's do one at a time here. And then for the last one, we're going to put in a stairs up. So grab your stairs up and drag and drop that into there. Okay, so let's just press play and have a look what we get now. So it will randomly put some stairs in. And you can see it's done that there. Okay, now the stairs themselves, the up ones, are actually created to face in the negative Z direction. So if you're running along in this direction, then you'd be on the right level already to go then up those stairs. So what I'm going to do just quickly to make this work a little better for us is go to Generate uh, World. And what we're going to do down in this pause here is actually go back negative in the Z direction. All right, so now let's go back in and press play. And we will get it in the other direction. And then the order in which these objects are created are listed in the hierarchy. So stairs up was the first one in this case, which isn't the best example of what I wanted to show you here. So let's just move along to the next lot of stairs. Okay, let's look at these stairs here. So let's say that this was the first platform that was generated and then we had the stairs up. Okay, so you're running along this platform, then you go up these stairs. Where are you now? Well, you're in the correct sort of Z position to be on this platform, but you really want this platform to be lifted up and aligned with these stairs. So if we can just, while well, we've still got play pressed, click on this one, which is platform... Z split and move it up like this so it aligns to where we want it to be at the top of the stairs and then have a look at the actual Y position where we want it. In this case you can see it says Y uh, 4.79 which is if we set it to 5 the way I designed it to be uh, then 
the stairs are actually five in height. So after we've gone upstairs, our position is not only going to change in the Z direction by 10, it's going to change in the Y direction by five. So we can allow that in the code. So let's open that up. And then in here, what we're going to do is to test which platform we actually put into the world. And then if it was the stairs up, then we can add a five to the Y position. So if, and we want to test for this platform here, that's the one that we just generated. If that dot game object dot tag, I think that game object in this instance is superfluous, uh, equals, and it will be stairs up, which is our tag that we used. If that is indeed the case, then what we're going to do is pos dot y plus equals five. Okay, so save that. Now let's go back into Unity and we'll press play and have a look at what we get. So here we are, we're starting from this platform here, obviously back into the scene. This is our first platform. And then as we move along, there's our stairs and now we've gone up by five and there's some more stairs and notice it goes up by five again before it puts the next one down. Then up, then along and along and along. And then oh, two lots of stairs up and up. All right, so that's working very nicely. All right, what about the stairs down? Okay, well, this is going to be a challenge for you. What I want you to do is go into your world, put a size of five, then put stairs down as your last prefab in here. So grab my stairs down, put that into there. Okay, and now what I want you to do is to update the generate world code to deal with stairs up and stairs down. When we come back in the next video, I will show you how to accomplish that and we will continue building our procedural world and start to turn corners by using the T-section platform. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.